Okay, um, ne our next speaker is Jay, and this is Jay's introduction. Zhou Jie, Rishi, Luosan, Gao Gong, Tailiao, Gong Chen, Boshi, Lai Mei, Du, Boshi, Ho, Ran Ho, Zai Nasa, Zo Yen, Jiu, Ji Suan, Ji, Shu, Shi, Gai Han, Kai Fa, Hu Lian Wan, Ji Shu, Tan Jia, Chi, Ge, Gui Gu, Chuan Yen, Gong Si, Adobe, Wells Fargo, Xian Zai, Robert Huff, Yong AWS, Zo Website, Zu Yao Xin Chu, Shi, 孩子教育，特别是男孩成长和创业。Sir <笑> Roger, class of 2017， 啊，会唱的儿子，嗯，是嗯 ，class of 2021， 也在这里。嗯，周杰，呃、嗯、，He will talk about internet, past, current, and future. Welcome. 好像不用这个也行吧，是吧？要一点，就说要自然一点，还是就这样就听得见吗？还是要用台？啊啊，如果要用还是啊，就说我我叫周杰，我是讲这个啊 ，Internet past, present and the future 啊、uh, ，So everybody will say, okay, how you can talk about the Internet in ten minutes and predict the future? So I hope after the 10 minutes you have a more understanding of the internet. Um, so you will see the things you didn't see before. Uh, like uh, uh, the rise of the internet, like uh, Huizhan has uh, introduced before, is the rise of the computing power. That's the more slow that uh, in general the computing power double every. 80 months, uh, along with the memory and the disk space, the network band, all those uh, increase to allow um, the, all those traffic can happen. Uh, the other fundamental driving force, which you may not know, is <coughs> the globalization of our society. It's not uh, uh, coincidental that the rise of the internet in the 90s is the rise of the globalization, especially start with like uh, uh, outsourcing. So these two things together uh, become the driving force of the, uh, the internet. And even today, still the computing power and the globalization and the two into the future as well. So that's where you see this is the first graph, the <coughs> two fundamental driving force of today's internet and the future. So next we talk about the actual internet. Uh, here I wanted to uh, talk about the, the parallel universe of the internet. So you will see there is a multiple version of the internet, uh, past, present, and the future. Of course, uh, we now, before the internet, uh, we have all the cement frame, other system, uh, even they are still working today uh, in some like a banking system. So here, then we call it the 90s, the internet as we know today. This is the web. So you have a web, you have a website, uh, you have the link, URL, you have, we use a browser to look at. Uh, for the enterprise, we have API, you know, for the web service to work. Finally, everything go down into a database. Uh, the nature of the database is private is a centralized a company's server, right? In the cloud or otherwise. So what's the other internet? Here is a uh, we have a, now we start to see the other universe of the internet. That's just the Huisan has mentioned before the blockchain. And how the blockchain different than the web we have today? So first of all, we don't have a site. We don't have a website in the blockchain system. We have a block, right? That's very fundamental. Second is we don't have a link. To link the web, to link the sites together, we have the hash code to link block to block. Then third is uh, normally we don't use a browser. We use a special app like a wallet for the Bitcoin to access the uh, blockchain of Bitcoin in this case. So in the future, you will be the same. They use a different protocol than HTTP as well. Uh, 
another key factor is the key. Uh, in the Bitcoin, and the, if you lose your key or someone steal your key, you lose everything. So that's how to manage your key effectively and securely. That's the extremely fundamental and challenging as well. Uh, a lot of most of the Bitcoin stolen is due to the uh, exchange. They store the uh, client's password of the key. So when they steal the password, they can access it. Another difference between the web and the blockchain is uh, it's not a database, it's a node. Um, currently, for example, for Bitcoin, there are maybe 20,000 nodes. Each node contains the, everything in the block, you know, Bitcoin, for example, right, for a given blockchain. Um, with this uh, 20,000, 30,000 nodes, they are fully independent. There are no dependency. They are, um, public to accessible to anyone on the internet. And uh, there is no dependency, there is no central authority, there is no uh, a single server uh, as center of the universe. Uh, every node is equal. Of course, there is more, there are some nodes is more equal than others, just like in your society, but that's different story. <coughs> of course, we never stop at one universe we eventually will get into another universe that will be beyond in the future. Uh, so now we see the web and the blockchain as two parallel systems, how they combine together, what will happen. So here is the graph, Roger Millard agree with me, but that's what's my thinking. Uh, on the left side, that's where the hardware relates the Internet of the Things. Uh, typically, at the extreme case, it's like iRobot, security camera, you know, all those things. Um, iPhone, you can think, is, is, is hardware, but with some kind of uh, software inside. On the right side, there's machine learning that's purely software, uh, typically like Google, or oh, things messed up already. Uh, AWS and the Facebook, they are like a more purely software. Dot com, all of them, they are in between because uh, they have to finally deliver some physical uh, goods to the people to serve. At the bottom is the blockchain. Um, this is a T-shape, so I will talk about the why is the T-shape. Then we look at the uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is something very close to the bottom of the blockchain, uh, but it's an application built on top of the blockchain. Uh, I put a special color there, I will mention why is that. Uh, eventually, uh, as we today, I says the Bitcoin is an asset, not a currency. So I kind of uh, I agree with this assertion, and I, I think that in the future, the Bitcoin still will be the asset, it's just like a gold, instead it becomes the currency we will use. Uh, eventually, um, there is some like a bit dollar, bit yuan, the euro will come out. That will be the real cryptocurrency we are going to use uh, at the center of the universe that will interact with uh, hardware, IOC, and the machine learning, all things together. Uh, I put a Bitcoin as a special color, a red color, and then you see at the bottom there is a red color, it's called the consensus. <coughs> Bitcoin is a system built on top of the blockchain, but uh, Blockchain is part of the Bitcoin. So it's a, if you can think it's a static uh, part of the uh, Bitcoin, which is a structure, the rule, you know, the, the code. But the other a dynamic part of the Bitcoin that's really essential is the uh, emerging concepts. Just think about, think about like uh, Hui Chang has talked about the, in the AI, you have supervised the trading and supervised the trading, which is much more difficult. You think about the Bitcoin is a unsupervised, no trading, just grow nature by set up a few rules. That's all you do. How, how can you program things without <coughs> supervising, without trading, and it grow by itself? 
So that's really the, uh, the beauty and the things accomplished by the Bitcoin. That's why I said it as a gold standard. Uh, so the, the emerging consensus is really the hard dynamic at every moment when the blockchain grow each block, how, which block win, why, and how to prevent someone to abuse the system. Of course, there are always people you know, try to gain the system. How this can resist all those uh, human temptation right? uh, without uh, uh, supervision. So, uh, like uh, in our society, we are not able to achieve this yet. But that's the perfect example we achieve. Uh, after this, uh, I wanted to mention this blockchain is almost 10 years history. Uh, so everything 10 years old carry a lot of technology debt. So I, I feel confident uh, it's time to put the blockchain and the Bitcoin to the 2.0 version, just like our web 10 years later, we come out to web.2. Uh, so I think it's a huge opportunity for the Harvard students and the graduate to eventually to take those kind of uh, opportunity to reinvent the internet. Uh, Bitcoin and the blockchain, it's a, in 20 years, first time I can feel I can hold the internet in my hands. I don't need any, I don't need any data. I don't need much more power, uh, computing power to start with. And I don't need complicated algorithms. It's really relatively Sample to do it. Uh, so that's the kind of huge opportunity. <coughs> At the end, uh, I want to share is uh, uh, if you have a great idea, it's, good. it's great to share with other people, uh, even though you may not end up the person who accomplished <coughs> or to materialize this idea. Uh, that's because you may not be the right person to do it. Uh, so, for example, for the Facebook's case, you know, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, worthy, he is the right person to do it, but uh, if you join with him, you still win a lot. So there is no need to hide the great idea because uh, the idea doesn't become the reality that there is no value out of it. You know. uh, if you join with anyone who can really execute to make this happen, you win as well. So that's the <coughs> end of my any question? Yes, blockchain itself is just one of the decentralized technology. Right. Do you know anything else other than this? Uh, so because block itself, right? It's just, <coughs> just one implementation. Right. So currently, for example, in the case of the cryptocurrency, everybody just copy the Bitcoin's uh, code base, then just mostly just change the transaction part. Because the transact, uh, Bitcoin, as to make it sure to grow, every 10 minutes you refresh the global database, basically. Uh, but that comes with a lot of uh, shortcomings. So we want the transaction conform in a second or a millisecond. How, how you do this? That's how the people get around. There are things to get around. But the total, the, is there any like, other universe outside of blockchain? Yeah, I would say. It's just that I'm not the familiar with it. Right. You, you talk about the, uh, the other parallel universe, right? So I'm wondering whether there's other implementations to do the same. Because the concept is just, is just, just one thing, right? The implementation can be multiple. Yeah. So the two concepts that basically the currently uh, cryptocurrency come with why is the blockchain a different way to uh, to set up the structure. Another is really, you, you can set up, I don't know any other structure, you know, that's what I don't know. Another which is regardless of what kind of other structure you have, end up you have to resolve this uh, emergent count, uh, consensus issue because otherwise it has to be supervised system. For an unsupervised, the naturally growth system, how they grow happen and when there is an external force to try to influence the, how you resist it, right? So those are the things, these are the paradigm, though we learn the 
disease today. So that's are the new paradigm. You know. yeah. I, I think we need to have a, like a offline conversation. Yeah. That's because uh, to me, uh, like digital currency is just one thing, one application. But concept here is like a decentralized the uh, network, or even in future disrupt the whole like the cloud computing things like that may happen, right? But it could be uh, based on multiple technologies or even combinatorial innovations. So yeah, definitely. That's one reason I put this T shape because currently we have all everything. Uh, you know, I, I will see or machine learning, they are more at the level of how we interact with people to people who are not address the structure of society. So they, something like a blockchain or other structure were able to address kind of our society structure level. Uh, not only just, uh, just e-commerce. Great. So I like the, the T shape itself, but this <laughs> talking about the, yeah. uh, the bottom there could be something else. Just could be something else. else. Totally agree. Yeah. yeah. The structure, especially the structure, not necessary to be blockchain. Really, just people talk about blockchain change. Like what we are talking about here is most of the applications, right? I'm more interested in whether it will fundamentally change some infrastructures for the network, even cloud computing, and all the others. But I think we will. We'll yeah, that's why. There is the ability to reinvent the blockchain, you know, uh, 10 years later. And look at something else. Sure. Or something else, yeah. I, I also just try to quickly mention that uh, in the human history, we invented the money only three times. First time we come out of this code with the exchange, then we government print the money. That's the third time someone created money out of nothing. Uh, so it's a very fundamental impact. Um, yeah, regarding um, the comments that you made, I think, uh, well, I happen to work in the network infrastructure. Uh, uh, I think if uh, uh, the blockchain, a uh, blockchain uh, really got into the wider usage, and uh, it's going to force the infrastructure to make the change as well. Uh, my example, I think, is the public of network accelerated um, technologies, right? You've got to specialize the hardware. To make it more efficient, uh, much faster, and better performance. So, uh, processes. Susan, I'm seeing a uh, uh, more fundamental change because you know P2P is really hard to scale, right? Yeah. If uh, you know the box, yes. box chain is already have the problem. So, yeah. I noticed there's some other other means to do things totally not using block at all. But you know, still like a debatable what kind of technology you would Yeah, yeah, so yeah. absolutely. And then the, the, the network you know right now is more centralized. Everything is uh, the, the network. The data flow is, we call it, like uh, northbound, right? So in the future, the P2P will be future. Then the data flow will be southbound. So. Hey, look, we are look at it. Um, the infrastructure right now, it's, uh, uh, it, it, it takes some consideration that the application level, a right? uh, blockchain is mounted. Um, and that there are many existing ones and uh, different protocols, uh, but at uh, the lower layer, uh, at the route base layer, it does not consider those, you know, put those into a specific consideration. Uh, except that, you know, some common ones like TCP uh, connectivities, uh, people want to have, a, you know, an acceleration on them, and then they have a special, specialized software and hardware to do that. Um, and, uh, I think a blockchain could have happen, you know, could have the same thing happen, uh, but we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So we'll see if we can have an offline. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I have another question actually related to the more <coughs> in Silicon Valley, I mean, sorry, Silicon computing, <laughs> and uh, well, many people climb close to the end of it, right? So do you see any anything new, or how can you either extend that or change to a different time? First, uh, you know, I'm not the expert in this area, but what I say is that uh, the people just packed more module right, into it. So <laughs> that way to expand it, right? So, sort of. Yeah, but yeah, definitely the, the, the law itself won't hold like that, right? right? Like that, not not that they, so that's why I changed it to the computing power instead of the... <laughs> uh, okay. So in general, computing power, I mean, that's uh, what it is. 
for, for the application for the end user, that's what it's about.